How does the software governance of all of the Hyperledger projects work? So in open source projects, you do, it's not a free for all, right? It's not just everybody throwing in every line of code, hoping that what, you know, it sticks to the wall and, and, and that everything is fine, right? There actually is a development process that involves decision making about what comes in and what doesn't, right? At the core of each of the projects at Hyperledger is a set of maintainers. These are individuals who either were with the project when it came in uh, as initial maintainers, right, because they had been working on the code before, or were invited in by that initial set of maintainers to become maintainers after demonstrating, you know, a, a history of contributions to the project, right? These are now individuals who are trusted. Once you're in that group, uh, obviously everything those maintainers do is public. If they commit uh, to the source code repository, approve a, a, patch uh, a commit request, uh, uh, if they uh, or pull request, uh, everything they do is public anyway, so there's always that accountability uh, for their actions. If somebody does something wrong, anybody can always say, I think that's wrong, and, and the, the, the set of maintainers can sometimes come to a decision to reverse a commit, right? That's within their power. Um, but it's really up to those maintainers to also chart the path forward. What's the roadmap? When will we do the next release, right? The next minor point release, the next major release. Um, but obviously they do that in a public way. Sometimes they'll use a phone call, sometimes they'll use uh, chat you know, on Rocket Chat, sometimes they'll use email. Um, but they know that their job is to be accountable and responsible to the broader development community. Um, uh, now, from a Hyperledger perspective, we leave it up to the projects to really decide their roadmap, or what they're trying to solve. Uh, there's a group called the Technical Steering Committee, though, that is elected by all the contributors across all the projects, not even just the maintainers. Anybody who has contributed a line of code, contributed to the wiki in some sub substantial way, they elect a group of 11 developers who um, form this Technical Steering Committee. And the TSC is kind of an oversight body. They make sure that the projects are growing and that they're healthy. They review um, activity in those projects. Uh, they also approve new projects when they, when they come in and they, and they approve the graduation from the incubator, right? What they don't get to do is, you know, tell, tell a project, hey, you're working on the wrong thing, go work on this instead, right? They really have to depend on this kind of decentralized governance, right, to aim in the right direction. By and large, we try to make sure, though, that every project has some sort of relation to distributed ledgers and smart contracts. Our goal is not to be the GitHub of distributed ledgers and smart contracts projects. There's already a GitHub for that, right? We want these projects to be a curated, um, you know, coherent portfolio of different projects that might even compete with each other, right? In many ways, Fabric and Sawtooth and Aroha do overlap, and you can build an implementation of something in all three of those. That's okay, right? We're going to discover over time how these projects differentiate with each other, and it's the role of the Technical Steering Committee and a bunch of other committees we have around identity and architecture and, and, and white papers and things to try to weave these different efforts together in uh, something that looks coherent, something that, that makes sense for developers.